I'll I'll start by asking. Uh, there are many characters in this film that aren't particularly nice, mm. uh, but that doesn't prevent this film having a very affable atmosphere. I thought there was a very nice tone to it, right. and you really get the sense that everyone in the film gets on, which is something that really com comes off. Uh, was that the case? Was this one of those sets where it was just really, really easy to shoot? It was. I was very lucky. I, I cast a lot of people that I wanted, uh, and some that I knew. Uh, that had been involved in the viral series like Martin Freeman and things, um, and uh, they all wanted to do it. I think you know, uh, once you get people that want to be on something, and I did encourage, sort of, I said, look, this is a comedy, so we're not coming in to do something about you know, domestic violence or you know, whatever incest or something. It's not a heavy thing. It's a British comedy, so we're going to come to set with an attitude every day of, you know, you can have some fun. You know, uh, the, with the script, uh, you know, some actors wanted to absolutely stay to the lines, others wanted the freedom to move. People like Vicky who were very good at improvising. So we encouraged all the actors, you know, that we were, ca were cast to do what they want. And I did sort of say to a lot of the actors, um, now that you're cast, that's it, you know. I believe in you 110%, you're in, just enjoy it and, and be where you want to be. We let the band stay together. They stayed up in the town hall in Bethnal Green, so, you know, they sort of got, become very pally very quickly. And, Obviously, me and Vicky ended up together <laughs> off screen as well as on screen, so that was sort of a part of the chemistry. And there was a feeling that we were all mates really on this. And I know every film and things sort of try to say that, and they, but there was on this ironically mates. I mean, people like Dylan was in the Prems, who was the singer in the band, was a, was a long time friend of mine. We've got the same agent, we got on really well, and loved him acting. And so we were pals, you know. So there Even was a lot down of good crew as well. Like Johnny, you know, pulled in some of his mates that work in the industry in Wales and said, "Come to London and help me with Svengali because." That's what Svengali is all about, you know. You kind of pull in. Even my brother-in-law, he was yeah. a runner. He was a runner on it. And we did. Point. We tried to do that, where we tried to get a sort of a family sort of feeling atmosphere amongst the, amongst the set, and it, it worked. I think it worked sort of, mm. you know. And I think it comes across that you know, sort of that was the the spirit of the film, really, that you're doing a, a comedy that is set in the world of rock and roll, and you know, to have a laugh. And the thing is, when people like Alan McGee or Carl Barat turn up on set. Certainly amongst the extras and, and or the sporting artists, sorry, there's a frisson goes through that, you know, there's a libertine here, you know, so that really does help. There's a sense of excitement, really. You don't get sometimes on films where, you know, everybody gets used to each other. So we were getting these great cameos coming in for a day or two, which really, really sort of give things an extra spice, you know. And I, I like the way that worked, really, because every day they'd be like, you know, especially when Martin Freeman sort of came with Maxine Peake, there was a real attitude amongst everybody. Oh, Martin Freeman's going to come out. But he just strolled in. I was gutted I didn't have a scene with him. No, I know. I'm, Ma I'm Maxie. I kept all the scenes of Martin for me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's something. And you mentioned, of course, the two of you, you got together on, on, on set. How far into proceedings was that? And do you think that the rest of the shoot uh, was... Do you think it benefited the rest of the shoot as a result? Do you know what? I'm going to answer this, because I, th I was thinking about this yesterday. And actually, because we got together quite soon, in terms of towards the, you know, in, in the shoot. That's like the honeymoon period. Everybody knows that that's kind of like when you're on your best behavior and all that kind of stuff. And actually, we was having to act as well because as much as the chemistry is there, you don't need to fake it. Um, we were still having to sort of impress one another and yeah. do the scenes and you was producing it as well as writing it and acting in it at the mm. same time. And I was, you know, living in London, it was all quite, there was quite a lot going on, and actually, we, you know, we had the best time ever. It's just quite interesting to know that we was also in, you know, in the sort of first stages of our relationship. I was playing a 40-year-old Welsh mod who loves music, who has to be in love with Vicky McClure. It was a real stretch, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't, it wasn't difficult at all. No, I mean, it wasn't difficult, but you know, when you think about the acting side, because there must have been days when I was thinking, oh God, I've got to try and be funny, or we've got to do the drunk scene, and like, I don't want to. You know, mess it up. Yeah, no, we were great. I mean, she was very good. She got a bit sort of, you know, method on me when um, when we had to argue one day, and um, you know, she said to me um, oh, that we're not going to talk for this day you know, because we're just going to do the scene, and that was quite interesting because it was very early, sort of when we'd met, so we were in the honeymoon, and we'd gone from being like, oh yeah, <laughs> and then she's like, I'm not talking to you till we film, which was like about four o'clock in the afternoon, and so that was it. She didn't speak to me, and um, we did the scene, and that worked, you know. And then once we finished the scene, we were sort of back, sort of doing. What were we doing? I don't Hello. know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it was kind of that went on as well. So she, you know, it was a, there was a kind of a professionalism from Vicky that was brought to it. You know, that was quite interesting. I mean, she did a lot of things that really surprised me. And you did, didn't you? Where she would do this thing where she go, uh, I don't, I don't need to do that or that. And I definitely think she shouldn't do that. She should just end up there. 
And I'd be like, well, an actress who gets rid of lines, you know. Usually actresses go, I think she should do this and say this. And the, but it was the opposite <laughs> of Vicky. She was going, actually, for the benefit of it, I think we should go to there. Well, that was really liberating for me because I was going, oh, OK, you know, if you just want to get there, I think that'll work really well. So it was kind of your, your background to do that, wasn't it? To sort of, it's, it's all about the part rather than you, wasn't it? Yeah, although Shell is the most um, similar character to me that I've ever played. So, you know, apart from the sort of her style, which... We kind of, me and Johnny had a chat about that and it was kind of, I didn't want it to be a little modette, you know, because Johnny was, you know, he's very plainly a mod and, um... She flirted she with me. She sent me this photograph of her as a rockabilly did, girl like yeah. that. <laughs> what do you think of this, Johnny? I was like, yeah, it's really good. I've, I've got like bright red lips, kind of little bow in my hair with a leather jacket and I was, uh, no joke, I must have took about a hundred pictures trying to do like a really like, <laughs> this is a selfie, but it's a really good selfie that's, I just did it, quick, no, <laughs> let me explain. It was literally like, oh God, go back to the mirror, sort myself out, send it to you, and then I was just like, oh, what do you think of this? This is what I'm thinking for Shell. <laughs> I was like, that's brilliant, and then after this, <laughs> I didn't know any of this went on, but yeah, it was a very good photo. Thanks, I think I it took me a while. Yeah, yeah. I just like the idea that you can have an argument and then someone can shout cut and then you can be friends again. Oh, yeah. I, know, I wish I was like nice, that in real life. I know, oh, yeah. I know, it was. What was really interesting was that um, <laughs> when, we did the, when we did the argument um, and that scene, we, oh, you obviously have to, you have to do it quite a few times from different mm. angles as well. You kind of, uh, you get more worked up with each one and uh, I noticed by the one that they went with the take with, I was kind of like breathing a change. I was going, <sighs> I don't know what it is. obviously I was in that moment of that. And your voice breaks at one point and I chucked the line into it, which was improvised where, you know, obviously my father, is ill in it, and she kind of does this thing where she goes, "That's not fair," and it's, she's almost saying it, not just in the scene, but in an acting sense. Yeah, you know? yeah. That's not fair. It's amazing. That's the the. Because the I don't know what to say after that. That's, that's, yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. I'd be thinking as an actor going, oh, you've stumped me. <laughs> I can't do anything about it. Yeah, but it's a, that's the scene that they all wanted in the edit suite because they went. It was the most amazing thing that she, you know, she could have said to the character. And uh, so, what I'd like to know, what's in Dixie's bag? Because he just walks around with this shopping bag. You'll never know. You know, it's like oh, the suitcase Johnny, in uh, it's cruel. like the suitcase in um, in the Tarantino film. That's what it's based on. Mm. Remember the suitcase? Yeah. A lot of people think it's the belt in it because it shines on him. We were going to do that. We were going to do a thing where he looks in and when he puts the record deal in and, and get a shine, but we didn't have enough money. So they actually they made a really crap sort of like reflected thing and went get it in the sun <laughs> in the street going and going make my face there. It's a bit of light. Like no, it hasn't worked that. But uh, no, it's um, I tell you what's in there. It's his it's his tapes the band it's a walkman this is actually in there and a load of enemies oh. and and some sandwiches sometimes and a that mobile I phone made. yeah but the um when i went when i did it the the, the bag looks bomb proof the tesco bag because it, it, he's oh. carried this bag through like this weeks and i went through was it 72 they said props went really I went through 72 bags because the bottom used to go all the time bottom used to go but in the film it looks amazing because he's walking around with this bag and you think god that bag's fantastic but it wasn't. Saying that, if you'd have had one of them, you know, the recyclable ones at Tesco do now, they're brilliant. You've got to pay for them, though. Yeah, pay but they last you a long time. It's been no, good for it? the environment. Yeah, well, you know. So just finally, very quickly before I go, um, Vicky, uh, this is in the 90s, obviously yeah. coming out this year, which is... Which I don't know if it's coming out this year. Well, they'll be being shot. This yeah, year. we're going to shoot it, yeah. And I spoke to, to... I was lucky enough to speak to Shane last year, and he was very, brilliant. very confident that this could be the, the most defining thing he's done yet. Uh, do you share that confidence? Have Absolutely. Shane won't go into something if he thinks it's just going to be the same or, you know, just as good as what he's already done. So, yeah, I've no doubt Shane will, you know, sort of go with it and run with it in, as, as, as he does with everything. You know, his work just does get better and better. And actually, me and Johnny were lucky enough to sort of watch some of Shane's oldest work that actually no one's really seen called the Dax... That's some, some connection or something. I mean, it's just mental, but it just goes to you show. Can see the early you can see stuff. the early, yeah, and to where he is now. And I, I genuinely think this is England. He helped with the film actually. He, um, yeah. He basically, um, uh, he watched a very early cut, and um, and he and he just sort of gave me a few little pointers and notes. Amazing, like gold, really. I was like, all right, okay, yeah. He was going, you should do that there and that there. Just genius, really. Been uh, so supportive and helpful, you know, from the start. And uh, God bless him for that. Yeah. No, I can't wait. Absolutely <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. No worries at all. Lovely talking to you. Thanks.